What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Watch With Us YouTube channel. My name is Anthony. I also go by Watch With Me. You can find me at Watch With Me on YouTube on my own channel. Uh, also my Instagram. Today we're going to be talking about the top five chronographs under $5,000 starting at $600. A uh, little bit of a disclaimer right away. I am not including the Omega Speedmaster because I just think hands down is the best chronograph in the world and it's just not fair to put it on the list. Uh, before we get into the topic, I wanna uh, bring up that we are doing a giveaway. There are three prizes. The only way to enter is to either subscribe to the Instagram page, which will give you one entry, or you can also subscribe to the YouTube channel or one or the other, but if you do both, you get two entries. Uh, the first place, Prize is a G-Shock watch. Second place is another micro brand watch. And third is a Rolex uh, desk clock or wall clock. But it is very cool. You can find the link down below explaining how the contest works. I hope you all join. Um, for those of you that have subscribed so far, thank you so much. The channel is growing pretty quickly for a new channel, which lets us know that you're enjoying what we're doing. Before we get into the topic, wristwatch check. I am wearing my Nomos Club. This is a watch that I was given uh, for being part of someone's wedding party. Very meaningful watch uh, to me. Uh, very, very simple, but uh, I think it goes well with everything. And uh, I don't wear it that much, but when I do, I always think about the occasion in which I received it. Uh, all right, guys, enough of all that. Let's get into today's topic. All right, starting off the list, number one, Baltech Chronograph. Now, Baltech is a micro brand company that was started out of France a few years ago. Uh, they specialize in kind of affordable, vintage uh, inspired watches. So now, if you watched a previous video of mine on my channel, I talked about the pros and cons of owning a vintage watch. One of them is how delicate they can be and how expensive they can be to repair. This is a great alternative if you want a vintage watch but don't want to have to worry about wearing it. Uh, this particular watch is around $600. For a little bit more, you can do an exhibition case back and see the mechanical uh, chronograph movement. In the back, it is a Siegel, uh, I think it's an ST901 movement. Nothing too fancy. I believe, I could be wrong, it is a replica of a Venus 188 movement, which is a vintage chronograph movement that's found in many, uh, many watches from Breitling and so on and so forth. But I think that this watch is designed Absolutely beautifully, it has a great strap on it. I did get to see them firsthand at Worn and Wound in New York City about two years ago, uh, and I was really blown away with what you can get for $600. They are watch collectors themselves, and they really design these for the watch collecting community. Uh, this particular watch comes in at 38 millimeters, which for me, I'm starting to scale back uh, the size of my watches, and I find that this is an amazing size to wear on the wrist, especially if you have a smaller wrist. So number one on the list would have to be the Boltec uh, Chronograph watch at 38 millimeters, $600, really cool looking watch. And if you're looking to get into that kind of vintage scene, but not making uh, the, the splurge to go with an actual vintage watch, this is a great start. All right, coming in at number two, we have the Hamilton Intro Automatic Chronograph. It's probably the worst name on the list, but it is an awesome watch. This watch first came out at 42 millimeters. Uh, it was a fantastic design. The watch community kind of gave some uh, feedback stating that it was too large. It shouldn't be 42 millimeters. And one of the things I respect about Hamilton is that they listened and introduced it in 2018 at 40 millimeters. This is a two register chronograph with date down below at six o'clock. It houses a Valjoux 7753 uh, chronograph so a very reliable movement that can be serviced all throughout its life, whether you don't want to go back to Hamilton after the warranty is over with and you want to just go to a watchmaker. Most watchmakers can work on a value movement. They've been around for many, many years. Very reliable movement. But this watch at 40 millimeters is just the right size. Uh, it has kind of elongated pushers, which I think throw it off a little bit, but it's very much a vintage inspired watch. Uh, that I think is a tremendous value of around $2,100. And like some of the watches on this list, you can find it for slightly less. So I think once you're approaching the you know four to $6,000 price range, there's many, many, many chronographs that you can get out there that are just as good as one another. But 
with this particular watch, it's gonna be very hard to find another chronograph that's as good as this, coming from a respectable brand like Hamilton. Uh, that's why it has to be on my list. So number two, the Hamilton. Number three is gonna be the Longines Big Eye. Now this is a aviation vintage inspired piece from the 1930s. Uh, Longines uh, introduced this a few years ago. Um, maybe even last year, I might be a little wrong on my dates there, but this is a spectacular watch with the perfect size at 41 millimeters when it comes to chronographs. I really think under 42 is the sweet spot. This is a, a very much uh, a recreation of a vintage watch. It comes with a beautiful brown leather strap that's somewhat distressed. It has a very aged black dial, very much respect to timepieces from the 40s and 50s. Um, even the movement they stepped it up and didn't go with your base 7750. They went with a different ETA movement that happens to be a column wheel chronograph. So you're getting that really nice snap of the chronograph once you start it. This watch at $2,600, it can be found for less, is a tremendous value. It's coming from a watch house that's highly respected, especially in the last few years. I really think they're starting to come up or recreate some amazing designs so they're getting a lot of street cred when it comes to the watch community. I really love this watch. Uh, it is slightly thick uh, at 14 and a half millimeters, but for under $3,000, and you can even find it for under $2,000 at times, I think it's a fantastic watch, and that's why it has to be on this list. $2,600, the Long Jeans Big Eye. It is a Fabulous watch. If you can, go to an authorized retailer and try it on. Let me know down below what you think. So one of the last watches on the list is the Tag Hoyer, or should I just say the Hoyer Octavia. This is a vintage inspired or vintage recreation of a, a sport watch from the 1960s. Uh, it comes in a few different dial variations. Uh, I think this is a perfect execution of a recreation with some great updates. First and foremost, the in-house movement with the 80-hour power reserved. I believe the movement is called the 1969. Uh, it is a chronograph with a hidden date at 6 o'clock. Uh, normally with chronographs, I don't prefer a date, but I think if you're going to do it, this is the right way to do it. It's hidden at 6 o'clock in the sub-dial, so you can't really see it. It doesn't take away with uh, how clean the dial is. It has the aged patinaed look. Uh, a beautiful exhibition case back showing off their uh, in-house movement. Comes in a very traditional vintage style bracelet. And for around $200 less, you can do the, the watch on the leather strap. It is at 42 millimeters, so I think that it probably would have been a, a little bit better if it was at 40, but I don't think they would have been able to house their movement. Uh, this watch can be found, I think, between $4,500 and $4,800, depending on strap or bracelet, and that is suggested retail. I like the fact that it doesn't have tag on the dial. They went real traditional and just put Hoyer. Uh, I, think, I think it's a well-executed watch, uh, very much in the theme of the list with that I've created for you guys, which is kind of vintage watches, but I like the fact that this is very much also a sports watch, a racing inspired watch. Um, I'll put up some wrist shots of it on my wrist. I was actually able to try this on and I think it's a very cool looking watch. It is a slightly higher price point than the other pieces uh, that I put in front of you guys so far today, but I do think that this is somewhat different than most of the watches you would find in the four to five thousand dollar price range, and that's why I like it. I like watches that you don't find everywhere, that you don't see on everyone's wrist. I mean, how many times are you gonna find in a watch uh, gathering uh, an Omega Speedmaster? Yes, it's an amazing watch. I already said it's probably my favorite but it's overkill. It's been around for many, many years. Everyone has it. It's a very affordable price point. This, at least, is somewhat unique, and the vintage ones are going for over $100,000, so we're not even gonna talk about those. So, uh, number four on the list is the Hoyer Octavia. So, the last on the list is the Tudor Black Bay Chrono. Now, I absolutely love this watch. I like the steel bezel. I like that it has the snowflake hands. A lot of people go back and forth. Why do you need a chronograph on a dive watch? I don't really think that's the point here. I mean, if we're really gonna dissect any watch, why do you even need a chronograph? I mean, you're not timing too much, and if you are, you're probably using your phone or something like that. That's neither here or there. This watch, I think, is very well executed at a fantastic price point. It's under $5,000 on a leather strap, and it houses probably what I think the best chronograph movement on the market under 
uh, $10,000. And that's the Breitling B01 in-house manufacturer caliber movement, 346 parts, 47 joules. It has a vertical clutch. It has a column wheel. Uh, it's housed by a very long warranty. And the partnership between Tudor and Breitling was absolutely genius because um, before this, if you wanted this Breitling movement, you had to spend $8,000 which is justified because it took five years for Breitling to design this movement and it's a fabulous movement. Now, with the bar technology that Tudor gave Breitling for their uh, three-hand in-house movements, they now have their chronograph movement and they're putting it in one of their watches at under $5,000. So, you're getting the power of Tudor, which is the power of Rolex, and you're getting the power of Breitling. That's why this watch is coming in at number one on my list, I think, for under $5,000, it is an absolutely beautiful watch. It fits very well on the wrist. It's very reliable, and it has everything you would want in a watch. Uh, it has design, it has the movement, and it has the heritage, and it's under $5,000. I don't think that this particular watch gets enough credit in the watch community, and that's why I want to put it at number one. I'm sure most of you have seen it online. Go try it on. Let me know what you think. Do you think it's as good as I think it is? Uh, but that's really it guys, that is my list of my top five chronographs under $5,000. Uh, do me a favor, um, let me know what you think of the watches, but also what are some other watches that should be on this list. We're going to probably do an updated version uh, some, some time from now, or maybe a five to $10,000 list, or maybe an under $1,000 list. So uh, that's really it guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, subscribe to our Instagram, enter the contest, we are drawing on July 1st, it will be live, we're very excited to, to give back to you guys that have been supporting us so far and in the future. So uh, until next time guys, take it easy.